seconds away on Studio 5. A new sound and new music from gospel legend CeCe Winans. Are there any Winans who can't sing? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any None that, that know? I know of that wow. just don't sing at all, no. Everybody sings a little bit at least. Plus, see where Hollywood stars unite to celebrate the best in family-friendly entertainment. We look for good, wonderful, you know, family entertainment and also to know what's out there that's inspiring. And then, a national tour. When you to celebrate the local church. Death didn't trap Jesus. Jesus trapped death. In Studio 5, starting now. And welcome to Studio 5. We are just days away from celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Easter Sunday. So what a perfect time to bring you a show from the Holy Land. And we've got a great show for you, jam-packed with some great stories. But let's get started like we always do with a countdown of the top five best stories in uplifting entertainment news. Here's the first two. At number five. So since we're in the car, I thought we were gonna carpool karaoke, man. Like that's this is what I've been dreaming about. Right. Golden State Warrior Steph Curry hits the road for a late, late show round of carpool karaoke. See the light in the sky, it's the sea. More than five million check out the video of Curry and James Corden belting out Disney tunes. At number four. I cannot believe that Tony Romo is choosing to walk away from the game of football at age 37. Beyond the buzz of the Dallas quarterback's retirement is a beautiful story of brotherhood. I think there, there's some respect that comes with that. Tight end Jason Witten tweeted this tribute to Romo saying, there is no one I would rather have had next to me on this journey other than Tony Romo. And Romo responded, you made football a lot easier for me, but you also made my life better by being in it. We're all given grace by the Lord, so no one's perfect, but you know, Jason's about as close as I see, so he's awesome. And those are just the first two in the countdown. You know, being here in the Holy Land reminds me of God's faithfulness. That song you hear in the background is from C.C. Winans. He has never failed me yet. I have the opportunity to sit down with the gospel legend to talk about her new music and her career for this week's Studio 5 interview. Old School Vibe is just one of the new sounds you can sample on the first C.C. Winans solo recording in about nine years. It's called Let Them Fall In Love. Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm wasting so help me, Jesus. I know what I am. Your son, Alvin III. Yes did a lot of the producing yes. on this. And writing. And writing it. Mm -hmm. Were you, did you catch his vision immediately? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Probably about six years ago he came and said, Mom, I got a great idea for how you should come back out. Mm -hmm. it, I didn't realize so much had, time had went by even then. It was like nine years. I have yeah, find that hard nine, to believe. Nine years from the time of the release, but when he came to me, it had probably been about four years. Wow. And. Um, he shared with me the idea, you know, mom is going to be really cool. My generation is going to love it. So you already know right then. I'm like, your generation? Okay, wait a minute. Um, but he assured me that the lyrics would be bold. It would be who I am, but yet it would be fresh, relevant, um, kind of a throwback feel in there, mm -hmm. you know. And so I was like, oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Um, but when I finally got it, and it took him a while, trust me. If you talk to him, I'm sure he'll tell you how bad I was. Um, but but when I got it, I got excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be really, really good. It's going to be fun, you know. Had all live music, 40-piece orchestra. Nice. It was awesome. But I have to say, I knew he was gifted and talented going in, but I found out a whole nother level that I didn't know that God had really bless them with, you know, downloaded in him. So as a mom, you know, I would work during the day or late at night in the studio. And when I get home, I would just weep and say, God, you're so faithful. You're so faithful. And I saw his faithfulness to the next generation through working with my son. That's beautiful. And your yeah. son helping you and your husband at your church as yes, well? Yes, my son and daughter. Oh, wow. Yes, they're both very involved. They're preaching and teaching. So it's a family. It's a family ministry. Yeah, we're all doing this. <laughs> we were all very surprised by the call, mm. but we've all embraced the call. Cece and her husband, Alvin Love, started Nashville Life Church five years ago. It began after her music producing son invited about 30 friends over to their home for a Bible study. And we looked at each other, it's like, oh my God, all the prophecies started coming to our minds. We we're like, this is it. Mm, that's <laughs> and we started Nashville Life. Nice. So it's a church full of millennials on fire for God. We're teaching them how to be disciples. We're making sure the main thing remains the main thing. And that's just loving God and loving people. Many people watching are gonna wanna know, what is your secret for reaching that generation? Because they're leaders in churches and looking out into the audience and not seeing them. What yeah. is the, the key? Well, you know what? The number one thing, we were birthed out that way. You know, very diverse group of people, which is awesome. Um, but, but I think from what we've learned, my husband and I, since we've been pastoring the millennials, is that they just want the real deal. They don't want all the stuff that we think have to be church, mm. the traditional stuff. And, and, and trust me, I love a lot of the great traditions, mm. but they want it simple. They just want a relationship with Jesus. I want to talk about your family just a little bit, the okay. great Winans family. We okay. love all of you. But a surprise to me, I'm sitting at home watching Greenleaf, and I see the Winans' last name on one of the lead characters. That's right. And I'm thinking, surely not. So then I look. Okay, so your niece is an actress? My niece is an actress. <laughs> Everybody thought, they didn't know if it was me, if it was my my daughter, my niece. I'm like, guys, she's way younger than I am. Thank you very much, but it's not me. But yeah, my, my niece Joy is on, on Greenleaf, and mm -hmm. so she's an amazing actress. Daddy, I think the charity is just trying to, Gigi, how many times do I have to tell you I don't need you looking out for me? When she told my mother she wanted to be an actress, my mother's like, oh no. Oh God, let me pray this off to you quick. <laughs> Needless to say, my mother is still praying. She's trying to pray her off the show. <laughs> I mean, because this show but, uh, tackles the inside of the church oh, and everything. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible the way it the church. But, but we love Joy. Mm -hmm. And um, and and I, I think she's amazing. And she's up for a stellar. She, she recorded a song That's awesome. called Master's Call. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful song. And so I applaud her. Um, she has her first nomination as a, And, you know, Joy never sang before. People don't know this. No. She never sang before she did the show. And so she called me and was like, Auntie Cece, I got to come to Nashville. I said, you come to Nashville for what? I got to go to the studio. I was like, what? <laughs> and she was like, yes, can you please come help me? Can you please? I was like, Joy, you got it in you. You know, I knew she could sing. And she had to find her own voice. I said, don't try to be anybody else. You're unique. Use what God has given you, and he'll bless it. Is, are there and any wine into can't sing? <laughs> <laughs> are there any None that, you that know I know of, of that wow. just don't sing at all. No, everybody sings a little bit at least. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Last question for you. I know people want to notice. I know you've got a new album out. We're yes. enjoying it. We're loving it. New record. Yeah. That's beautiful. Are you and your brother getting back together to do anything else? That's all we <laughs> I know. We no. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, nothing planned. Nothing planned. I mean, it took me nine years to get back in the studio to do this. You know, um, my prayer is always, Lord, let your perfect will be done. If it's singing, great. If it's singing with my brother, great. If it's not, great. Um, and, and saying that, God gave us this church. Mm -hmm. and, and it's full time, you know, and I love it. I love it. CC's new project is called Let Them Fall In Love. It is available right now everywhere. 
still ahead. Studio 5 hits the red carpet. What would we quickly be saying about tonight's event? <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, it's Bong Kui Kui. <laughs> Come correct, okay? Uh, I think she'd be very impressed. She would say, ooh, this so fancy. With your first look at the 25th Annual Movie Guide Awards. And welcome back to this special edition of Studio 5 coming to you from Jerusalem. Let's continue our countdown of the top five stories in uplifting entertainment news. Here are the next two. At number three, the National Geographic Channel premieres a special episode of Explorer, just in time for the resurrection celebrations. The most holy site in the world for Christians is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. It was thought to be built on the site where Jesus was crucified and entombed. However, centuries of neglect have left the tomb surrounding Christ's resting place crumbling. And now the church is undertaking a major restoration project. But the closely guarded secret, known only to the most senior clergyman, is that as a part of the restoration, the rock where Jesus was laying, the actual place where he was put following the crucifixion, will be visible for the first time in centuries. At number two. You get knocked down, you get back up. You get knocked down again and get back up. The NBA's Jeremy Lin reveals prayer is the weapon that helped him head in the right direction, on and off the court. And in an email to his prayer group, the Brooklyn Nets star identified Pastor Tim Keller as his favorite author, and his book, Prayer, as a guide to help improve his prayer life and his intimacy with Christ. More importantly, as I give everything I have, I'll trust. Trust God. Trust his word, his promises, his love. Trust him to do what only he can do. And there is just one more left in the countdown. You'll be sure to stick around for that. From the Holy Land to the red carpet, I had the chance to travel to Los Angeles for the 25th Annual Movie Guide Awards. Here's your first look at the show. Stars line the red carpet in Hollywood to shine a light on the importance of faith and positive entertainment. People are losing a lot of hope um, just with the political climate. People are losing so much hope in, I think right now showing faith is the best thing that we can do so people can see something that can make them feel hopeful again. We need all the positivity we can get. I mean, just scroll through your Facebook feed, you'll get enough negativity to last you for a while. Since 1993, Movie Guide has hosted this gala to award people in film and television whose work entertains and inspires. The group works to bridge the gap between the entertainment industry and the traditional family audience. But this is a really big audience. Movie Guide offers tips and guidelines for filmmakers and important information to people looking for family-friendly content, something the actor who's hosting this year's event appreciates. It's funny, I've been following Movie Guy for years. I mean, my oldest daughter is 30. Uh, my youngest son is 11. We have five kids. I have a six-year-old grandbaby. We go to Movie Guy because we need to find out what we're about to watch tonight. <laughs> CBN is among this year's award nominees. This has been a lot of fun. The documentary Pocahontas Dove of Peace is up for the Faith and Freedom Award. It was originally an assignment from Gordon that mushroomed into a 30-minute documentary. This year, Movie Guide also honors CBN's founder, Dr. Pat Robertson, with its Lifetime Achievement Award for living and communicating the good news. It's a great honor, and I, I really think the credit belongs to uh, media, uh, uh, the, the Movie Guide. They do such a superb job, and it's a thrill for me to be part of this celebration. It's also been a big year in entertainment for Dr. Robertson and Regent University, partnering with Hollywood heavyweight actor and filmmaker Corbin Burnson to produce the school's first full-length feature film, In Lawfully Yours. It's only fitting tonight, Burnson presents Dr. Robertson with his award. Tonight we honor Pat for that illumination, for that sharing, that kindness that he has shown to so many people who have crossed his path. 
That kindness prompts a standing ovation for a living legend in the world of broadcasting. Thank you, Carvin, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. In another month, I'm going to be 87 years old. And I, over that time, <laughs> praise God for his blessing in my life. And I can say, hitherto hath the Lord blessed me. Thank you all. God bless all of you. God bless America. Thank you very much. And you can catch the Movie Guide Awards on The Reels channel coming up April 16th. Still ahead, big voices unite to pull people back into church. We cannot be hidden. We will not be ignored. We will not be timid. We will not back down. We're sitting down with the man behind the music movement called Outcry. And welcome back to Studio 5. It is now time for number one in the countdown. Take a look. At number one. After Hodges bounces out, Jackie Robinson slams a triple to left center. April 15th, 1947. Jackie Robinson became the first African-American to play Major League Baseball. There were times, certainly, when we thought it wouldn't work. Just in time for the 70th anniversary, the story behind Robinson's rise is covered in this new book, 42 Faith, written by Fox News Channel reporter Ed Henry. The story's never been told. Long story short is that her late father-in-law was a minister in Brooklyn who, in 1945, had Branch Rickey knock on the door and basically say he wasn't sure if he could go through with signing Jackie Robinson to the first contract. As we remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is the perfect time to talk about the local church. And that is actually the focus of a concert tour called Outcry. I sat down with the man behind the music, Ryan Romeo, for a look at this week's Studio 5 Bright Spot. Lauren Daigle. Pastor Stephen Furtick. Death didn't trap Jesus. Jesus trapped death. And Jesus culture. I love, I love. I love your presence. Are among those headlining the latest outcry tour. This is a movement aimed at reminding the world about the power of the local church. The church gets uh, a pretty bad rap of late of sort of being missing, not relevant, uh, and not doing the things that need to be done in, in our world. What do you say to that? When you look at Revelation 19, you see the bride. And for us, that was a big deal. And we saw, okay, the church is there at the very end. So we know the end of the story. We're on the winning team, you know. And I think we operate in, we've been operating in such a kind of defensive posture lately. Mm -hmm. We wanted to communicate at this on these tours that, and through the book, that the church is not dying. It can't die. It's going to be around forever. And we are part of the greatest movement that the world has ever seen. And a lot of times we look back over church history and we can all point at the areas where we're embarrassed or we don't like, you know. Um, but we took some time to look back over church history and say, what are some high points? What are some things we could really be proud of? And ultimately, the world would not look like it looks if it weren't for the church. Would you say the church is as powerful today as it was in history? Oh, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, more so. I mean, some of the things that are at our fingertips now in terms of communication and uh, video and, you know, online things, the church is so creative these days. And we take it for granted. Um, and for me being a millennial, I should say, oh, the church is X, Y, or Z, you know, and, and falling short. But I look around and I'm amazed. For us, every night we see 10,000 people come together to worship Jesus. And you look at that crowd and you go, how could you say the church isn't powerful, you know? And there is so much power in the church. And I think we're going to see a whole lot more to come. Was there anything that happened to you or in your life that made you so passionate about the local church? I got saved because a youth pastor took time out of his day to bring me into his small group and tell me about Jesus. And I, I got saved at the end of high school and my life was forever changed. And God forged things in me that I would have never forged otherwise. And so when I started reading, I'd get on Facebook and I'd see a you know, blog post about 
10 reasons millennials are leaving the church or, you know, and something in me kind of awakened and I felt, I guess offenses kind of, maybe a little strong, but I started mm -hmm. thinking, be careful, you know, do you know who you're talking about? Um, and I started to really develop, and I think the Lord was really putting in me, this love for the church that I didn't have even before that. And now I look back over my life and I go, that, that local church life changed me. It changed my life. It brought me to Jesus. And if it weren't there, if it, if it were just, you know, people listening to podcasts, I don't know if I would have met the Lord the way that I did. And Studio 5 is catching up with Ryan and the members of the tour coming up. So be sure to stick around for that on a future episode. Up next on Studio 5. So meet me, Jesus, and I will follow you. This Grammy award-winning artist delivers lyrics for living. And welcome back to Studio 5. We are just about out of time for this edition, so let's look ahead to next week. Take a look. I'm praying to God. Deep in the water, deep in the water. Rapper and recording artist Ishan Burgundy takes a break from the stage to sit down with us. When I read the words of his scriptures, I depend on the spirit to give me pictures. Your album is called Passover. Where did that come from? Passover is it's kind of loosely based on the Passover that takes place in um, Exodus. And that's just one story from next week's Rundown. As for the final word for this show, I'm giving that to Grammy Award winning artist K.J. Scriven. He's got a message about the power of music. I, I'm really, really big on the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. Um, to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love my neighbor as I love myself. Music has an ability to pass all of your filters and your gates. And so even if you're not trying to, music carries a message in it. And so I feel a responsibility as a worship leader um, and as an artist to, to, to carry um, music and theology in my music to, to teach people. Just remember, God is the creator of music, so there is no wonder it is so powerful and impactful. That is the final word for this edition of Studio 5. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then you come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye.